One of my favorite gaming systems of all time has to be what's playing behind our E-Win Racing gaming chair right here. This is the Nintendo GameCube. Well, this is the GameCube from Japan, and I have an American one playing back behind me. Now, one of the things in a recent conversation with our good friend Russ Lyman, make sure you check out his channel. He does amazing how-tos and DIY stuff, was he was streaming some GameCube and wanted to know what's the best way to get video from your GameCube captured or not even just captured but the best video quality that you can get out of a gamecube now we're going to walk you through that because there are a number of different options and can get really confusing really fast we're also going to talk about some of the different models on the gamecube and why it makes a difference so let's get started so as Nintendo likes to do, Nintendo made a number of changes to the GameCube over its life. One of the things to get the best picture quality, you want to make sure you have one of the earlier models of the GameCube. Looking on the back here, you can see we have two ports and you can see it a little bit larger down there below the header and everything. So basically what you want is you want something that has that digital output because that will unlock more features and better video output for you. Now, if you only have the analog output, pretty much you're gonna be locked to a few basic video formats. And we're gonna show you those right now and kind of you know where, where they go, what they look like and what you can expect out of them. So, First and foremost is you do have your classic red, white, and yellow cables that will plug into the analog or the standard audio video output. This is the same connector they used with the Super Nintendo, with the Nintendo 64, and the GameCube to get you composite video. That's what it's called, it's composite video. Basically, all the video is handled by one cable, and then your audio is split left, right. Now, there are also S-Video cables that look very similar to this, but it's an S-Video connection. Now, not all TVs are going to have that, so that is important to note. Not all TVs anymore have composite video. So this is pretty much the default way that you can get video out of a GameCube, out of the box. And it's functional, but it doesn't look great. So what you can do from there... And some people have done is picked up these here. This is an AV to HDMI adapter. Listen to me very carefully. These things suck. They're so bad. They introduce lag. They introduce delay. They introduce a lot of time RF noise. They don't do upscaling like they advertise. I mean, these are just bad. Like this one here, if you look on screen, upscaler 1080p. No way. There is nothing in this unit that costs generally between $10 and $25 you can find these for. These are terrible. They don't upscale at 1080p. All that it is quite literally doing is converting from that composite video RCA jack to an HDMI. You're going to get about the same picture quality as just going with the straight composite video cables. You're going to get very little, if any, difference. This is an adapter of convenience more than anything. Unless you're absolutely desperate to play your GameCube, modern flat panel TV, and you have no other options, avoid these like the plague. Now, next up, and there's a number of these out there from companies like Level Hike, uh, Pound is another company, um, Hyperkin has got some of these out, and these basically will convert you from the standard plug uh, that will go into an HDMI cable. This is essentially this built into a cable is really what it is. It may look a little bit better, it may not introduce quite as much RF noise, but you're still not gonna have great picture quality going through here. This is again a connection of convenience. Um, I would say if anything, it does look better than composite, not as good as S-Video going through a clean source. And again, these can introduce lag, delay, latency, um, I'm not a fan of them. Some definitely look better than others. I would say avoid the pound cables. Those tend to be about the the worst out of all of them. And you know, I'm not trying to bag on them. Just in my experience, they tend to have the least authentic video quality um, and the most lag and delay. If you're going to pick up one of these, the level hike ones I have found tend to be the ones I prefer personally. And all the other ones out there kind of fall in between. Now. One thing I do want to take a real quick second here and address is with this cable and with some of the other adapters that are out there, you may see um, components from companies called Kayako and from Bitfunks. 
avoid them. So, and it's not, I'm not saying that their products are any good or not. I haven't personally tested them, so I don't. What I am saying is they have very questionable business practices and I don't support them. Um, Hayako got caught trying to um, pull a copy paste on Mike Chi, who created the Retro Tink, which we will talk about a little bit later. Um, they literally copied his design and his website product page to the fact that there were typos on the original product page that Kayako put on their product page. Not cool. Um, Bitfunks is what we call a cloner, and they basically copy paste from other manufacturers. They don't do any innovation. They don't do anything of their own product development. They literally reverse engineer other manufacturers' products, slap their name on it, sell it. Now, there's a couple of brands that that group sells under. Bitfunks is about the most popular one. So for these reasons, if you ever see Bitfunks or if you ever see um, Kayako, just know I will not recommend them. I do not endorse them. I recommend staying away from them. So, um, and the reason why I bring that up here now is because they do have some of these uh, HDMI adapters like this that, uh, quite honestly, they're just not very reputable. Up next, we're going to talk about these guys here, and I actually have one of them in my hand. So, this is essentially a, a digital to HDMI adapter, and that's where you need, uh, like I mentioned on here, the digital output. Everything else we've talked to this point would plug into the analog. This is tapping into the digital. Why is that important? Well, first of all, the connector is strictly a different shape. So this will not plug into any Nintendo GameCube that does not have that digital output on it. Second of all, it is a digital signal versus an analog signal. So uh, you're going to get crisper visuals. Um, it'll do 480p video output on it. Um, and overall, just a cleaner overall signal. Now... There's several of these out there. This is the one here. This is the Retrobit Prism. Uh, there's also one from another company called Insurrection Industries. This is called the Carby. Now, both of these are basically designed around the same infrastructure and architecture, shall we say. There's one, uh, one platform or one designer, essentially, a uh, designer by the name of Korg, that has put out his GCHD video solution. Uh, GCHD, GameCube, High Definition. And these all basically use that with proper attribution. That's the other thing that Kayako and Bitfunks don't do, is they don't always provide proper accreditation to those who really have done the heavy lifting. So uh, what I like about both the Carby and about the Prism HD, they both come with remote controls, so you can go dive into the settings and everything on here, and you can actually go ahead and update the firmware on each if you ever need to. The basic architecture has been around for over 10 years at this point. It's a proven commodity. I doubt that we're going to have to do any updates anytime soon to these. So, um, But that is one of the benefits on the Prism over the Carby is this just has a USB-C connector on the side where with the Carby, you need to go ahead and there's a special connector. I think it's called a JST connector uh, that you have to open up, plug into the PCB, do your update that way. This is just a simple USB-C cable. Plug in, plug into your computer. Do things that way. Um, from a style, functionality standpoint, overall responsiveness, performance-wise, identical. I gotta say. I mean, I I love the Prism. I love the Carby. They both work really, really well. Now, one thing that both of these lack that our next device will address, and this is the Eon Gaming GCHD Mark II. And if you notice, this is shaped a little bit differently, and it's wider than this one here. The reason being on the GCHD Mark II, it actually plugs in to both the analog and the digital output on here. Now, it is the Mark II, meaning it is the second variation of that adapter. The original one, the Mark I, did that as well. But what's cool about the GCHD Mark II is it is actually tapping into the analog output on here and you can tap into that with Wii component video cables which we'll get into component video cables here in just a moment um, and they're just a whole lot cheaper than the ones designed for the GameCube and we'll get into that here in a moment so um, the GCHD Mark II is considerably more expensive however than either the Carby or the Prism these are about $80 
Um, and I'll have links to all of this in a pinned comment. You can pick this up through CastlemaniaGames.com. Um, the GCHD runs, last time I looked, $160, I thought. Um, so it is more expensive. And what you're paying for is, first of all, that extra connector in there that will give you the analog output too. The other thing that this does, if you look at the way that this is designed, all the weight of this adapter, along with the HDMI cable weight, is supported by the digital connector on the back of the GameCube. So we're gonna plug it in here. If you look at, at the force laterally down here, you know it, it can sag and it can put extra wear and tear on that connector. Now, um, Todd over at, uh, I believe it's RetroFrog is his website. Again, I'll have that link down below. Has an amazing little 3D printed shelf that keys in here, provides your support for this, takes care of, of that weight bearing issue. But the GCHD takes care of that right out of the box. Now, the other thing, like I mentioned, is the fact that it does have the analog output on the back of it. And this allows you to connect basically an HDMI connector, and you can also connect to a, you know, a CRT television using component video cables for the Nintendo Wii. So you can go to two different sources. So if you're streaming, you can do that from your HDMI output. And if you want to play on a CRT TV, you can do that from the component video. You can also see on here too, they are available in a number of different colors. Now, I don't have it on here right now. There is an orange one that they did offer for a limited time, but you do have silver, indigo, the jet black now component video cables these are the original nintendo ones they weren't available very long I believe they were only available in japan and as you can see here 400 bucks that's the first one that i pulled up and quite honestly that's pretty common price for these cables now they do provide beautiful beautiful images but the thing with these is you still also need the analog cables for your audio so that's important to note uh, there are other options now that are out there. So again, uh, Retrobit, who has their pr uh, Prism HDMI adapter, they also offer their version of component video cables, and these are a lot less expensive. These are you know, about $60. Now, um, I've used these. It's actually what my system is connected to uh, in the back. I've actually been pretty happy with them. Um, I know in addition to these, there were also the ones from Insurrection Industries that you see on screen right here. Now, one difference between the two different cables is if you look at the ends of these cables here, they have a different sort of connector on it. This is called a BNC connector. And these are what generally you would use on like a studio quality monitor, shall we say. It's called a PVM. And basically it just pushes on and twists to lock on. Now, these also include an adapter to plug into a normal RCA jack. The issue I have had with these, and I do have a set of these, um, is the fact that due to the design and the size of the BNC connectors, when you're plugging into an RCA connector, they can touch. And that can cause issues. Now, one thing I actually just thought of tonight is um, I'm going to pick up some heat shrink tubing Put the RCA adapters on there, heat shrink it, and that should insulate those connectors so that they don't touch each other. Now, with this, just like the Nintendo versions, it still needs the analog audio cable to go ahead and transmit your audio. It's not an all cable, whereas the one from Retrobit, this is an all cable. It'll handle your audio and your video all in one. Also, all three of the HDMI adapters I showed you, they all handle audio and video right out of HDMI. So you don't need to worry about the analog output on it. So you know, I know many of you might also be thinking now, well, why would I bother with going component press video when I can just go this and gets me an HDMI output? Well, again, this caps you out at like 480p. Now, some of them will do some of the PAL or European um, upscaling to 572. I want to say I'm probably wrong on that. But when you go to a component video output or even composite video output, you have some options with what are called upscalers. And unlike that HDMI to AV or AV to HDMI adapter that I showed you, these actually do upscaling. These will actually improve your picture quality. These actually make the gaming experience better. These are called the RetroTink Minis. What the RetroTink Mini here will do 
is it will line double out of the analog. So if you have just your red, your white, and your yellow, or this also has S video on it, it'll line double. In fact, it's going to look similar to what this does here. Not quite as crisp, but pretty good. In fact, I had uh, used a RetroTINK 2X, which was another variant of this that had component video cables on it for years with my GameCube. And compared to the HDMI adapters, I thought these looked better, but these were also more expensive. However, the game changer that Mike Chi from RetroTINK came out with, and that's this here, and that's what's playing behind us. This is the RetroTINK 5X. This can take your signal out of the digital output on here, line multiply it up to five times to get you absolutely beautiful videos and hopefully not hit the microphone. Um, it's one of those things that I have always just loved the way that my, I mean, here we have it on screen. This is a uh, wave race uh, for the GameCube on screen right now. We bring this on screen properly a little bit here so you can see it a little bit more. Maybe, maybe. Let's do this. So here on screen, you can see what's actually playing behind me. This is Wave Race uh, Blue Storm, I think is what it is for the GameCube. And this is going through and it is line multiplied five times. So my settings on here, this is a 1080p output. And man, this looks really, really good. And the audio quality is great too. And again, these are using the Prism video cables. Um, now, this, when people ask me what the best solution is, my opinion, this is the best current solution out there is to go with a component video cable and then a RetroTank 5X. Even if you go with the Prism video cables, which run about $60, right? So add in the cost of the RetroTank is north of $300. So it is an investment in quality. Now, there are other, look at that title screen. Look how beautiful that looks. There are other options out there that you can choose from. Now, there are HDMI mods that will bolt into the system itself. You need to have soldering skills to be able to do that. They run about $130, $35. I will be honest, I don't know what the installation cost is for the mod. I don't know with where this is video quality wise unless you just absolutely want to go straight from your system to HDMI, to me, it looks beautiful. Now, if you are only using it for one system, I will admit a RetroTINK 5X, kind of a hard pill to swallow. That's where on my RetroTINK, I actually have two different switch boxes and over a dozen different systems going into this. I do have systems connected via the component video cables in back, one connector we have not talked about because it's generally not used here in the U.S., but it is popular in Japan and Europe, is this connector on the left-hand side. That's called a SCART cable. And think of that. So in the U.S., we have HDMI, and that's universal standard around the world now at this point. Before HDMI, we had what was called DVI. And DVI was a different sort of connector shape altogether, but it provided a lot of the same visual benefits that HDMI does. It didn't take care of audio. SCART kind of, I believe SCART predated DVI, but one of the advantages of SCART is the fact that not only was it an RGB signal, which looks beautiful, it also handled your audio. Where DVI was video only, HDMI, again, combines both of them. Um, I do have some SCART cables. I have Insurrection Industries makes SCART cables. SCART switcher that will go into this. And it looks great. Um, I myself have stuck with either component video cables or S video cables or the HDMI adapters for the GameCube. I haven't tried these. Before. Now, again, just kind of talking to our good buddy Russ. I'll have his channel link down. Actually, I will have his channel link for you in the upper uh, right hand corner for you. Go ahead, check him out. He does beautiful DIY stuff. But I just thought it was interesting that someone that. Um, has been involved in retro gaming, I figured he would have kind of known this stuff. And this is not, Russ, if you see, this is not a shot at you. I just, I kind of figured you knew this stuff. So I'm glad that he kind of inspired me to, to sit down here in our E-Win Racing gaming chair and kind of have this discussion with everybody because there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to understand. So um, just to kind of put a nice tiny bow on it, good 
would be something going from an S video type connection to a retro tank any that'd be a good solution and for something like that about 120 dollars roughly all said and done better would be something such as the you know these adapters here whether we're talking the prism hdmi adapter the carby or the eon gaming gchd that would be the better solution in my opinion the best solution to get the best video quality plug and play no soldering no modding required would be to get a RetroTank 5x and component video cables but i want to know from you how do you connect your gamecube what is the way that you get the best video quality out of your system and quite honestly have you tried any of these solutions that i've talked about here and which was your favorite let me know down below i will have links to everything down below in a pinned comment for you to go ahead and check out and if you do want to check out you know our individual reviews that we've done on like the prism hd that we have here the prism cables the carby Barbie cables and more. I will have the link for you right here where you can go ahead and check them out.